And hey everyone, it's Hayes and it's Miraculous Monday, so it's time for another screaming session. It's the holiday season. And in today's screaming session we'll be taking a look at transmission because apparently you all want me to talk about an episode that made me cry and an episode I've already discussed three times. I had my reaction video, my commentary video, and we also talked about it on the Miraculous Besties podcast. So if you haven't listened to that, you totally should. They were slandering Tiki and I was having none of it. Stay away from her. So I'll link it down below for you all. So, transmission. Our girly pop marinette du Pencheng is hashtag not having a good time after relation, which we know for sure because she couldn't even take this nasty ass tape off the wall when she threw away the photos of Adrian. Like, come on, marinette, this is gross. So Sabine, the queen, comes to check on her, but marinette is like, no, I'm not going to go to school today. And Sabine's like, all right, cool beans. And she's like, Tom, put some show cats on. Like, how... <laughs> How will that help her get better? Like, I don't like them. Like, they'd make me throw up, so please, please do not give me showcats if I'm ill besties. Also, Tom, where the hell did you get an alliance ring that big and beefy? Do you and Andre shop at the same places? So, then Tiki says... Oh, she totally can, Tiki. Are you gonna stop her? Like, Marinette could literally step on you. Not that I'm encouraging Kwame abuse, like, Gabriel does this enough in the show, but, you know, like... She totally could, but Marinette responds with I know Marinette is having a hard time. I get it. I feel really bad for her and I don't like seeing her upset. But I cannot deny that this line was an absolute genius. Thomas Astruck, give whoever came up with that line a raise, unless it was you, in that case. Ignore everything I just said. Although I don't think Marinette is that sad. Like, she managed to change her voicemail to reflect her mood. If you were that sad, you wouldn't bother. Which just speaks to how depressed I am because my voicemail is still the default setting. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Also, Chloe? What? What is she on? She says Marinette used to have to ask permission to come to school and then they just don't explain it. They just move on. Like, is this all Chloe's going to contribute to this season? Like, oh yeah, lol, Marinette had to ask me to come to school before, but now Thomas Astruck is gradually writing me out of the show, so you'll never find out why. Bye! <laughs> so Adrian agrees to take the homework for Marinette, and look at his little face, he's so happy to go and see her. Although I was kind of, you know, annoyed that Adrian and Sabine didn't really talk to each other. Like, I think Adrian would have an awesome relationship with Tom and Sabine if the writers would let him. A lot of people are also like, why is Sabine letting Adrian into Marinette's room? And I'm like, look, Marinette's mum knows Marinette is sad and she's probably aware that the only person she'd actually talk to is Adrian. Like I don't think it's that strange she'd let Adrian go see Marinette and oh my god he is the best laddo ever. He gives her the space by talking in the rest of the room but doesn't go up to her bed but he still offers to help her and talk it through with her. Oh my god. I've never had a crush on Adrian but he is definitely why I am single. Like he is literally my standard for men. And then Tiki and Plague are having a mental breakdown by uh, the bin. Like, oh my god, identity reveal? No. And as soon as I realised what they were panicking about, I was like, oh my god, identity reveal? Yes, but more of the excited version. I was like screaming inside. But it sadly did not happen. But oh my god, besties. What we got instead? Just, just, just watch. We got angry Adrian. I have waited and waited and waited for this and oh my god I was not disappointed and now all we need is for him to really really get angry with Gabriel, slap him and if he doesn't want to do that Natalie or I will do it for him. But like I am living for like like he grips the bin. I am living for that. Shows just how angry he gets. I Yes, I love it. So Adrian tells Marinette he loves her and she's like no and I just... I've never been shot before, but this is how I imagine it feels like, like, oh my god, Adrian's face. Kill me now. Don't take that seriously, besties. But <sighs> the show, for God's sake. So while Adrian and Marinette are having the least amount of fun, back across the road at school, the whole class are having a party because they think Adrian and Marinette are now dating. I don't know why they really assume that, to be honest. I'm um, like, Adrian going to take Marinette's homework over for her apparently means they're dating okay i mean i love their enthusiasm i can't wait to see what kind of party they'll have for their wedding reception if this is what they do when they start dating <laughs> and now back to asian marinette he's going to leave and he's like you'll think we'll have another chance and she says no and i just <laughs> i think a part of me died during this scene and i don't think i'll ever get it back and then Adrian says sorry to Marinette's parents and he's crying and now I'm crying and then Gabriel Bates for God's sake take a day off not today any day but today like don't you have some ugly clothes to design damn okay I also love how Gabriel Bates says Adrian has only just discovered love 
Aye, it's because you've never given it to him. That's the reason he's only learned it from Marinette. <laughs> so the rest of the class are still partying whilst Adrian and Marinette are crying in their beds. Great. But we do get treated to some Myvan and the very, very rare Kim Max. And it's all just adorable. Where shipping is concerned, we're all fed this episode, besties. Unless you don't ship any of these characters, then um, you probably hated the whole thing. <laughs> Nino finally rings Adrian and Natalie, best mum ever, picks up and then she leaves his room and swiftly pushes his dad down the stairs. Well, she doesn't do that, sadly. But she should have and oh my god, once she finds out what Gabriel Babes tried to do. And I bet she will because this is Natalie. She will find out and she will push him down the stairs like Gabriel Babes. I thought you were being nice at first, but this is just cruel. I'd call you so many names if this channel wasn't family friendly. Well, just about family friendly. We don't need to talk about all the times I've called Gabriel daddy, do we? <laughs> and his worst offence of all? Telling Adrian that an app with Lila on will help soothe his pain. Thank you for nothing. So, now, the scene. Tiki and Plague. If you watched my reaction video, you'll know I cried and oh my god, Marina is like, I can still do this despite how much it hurts, but then Plague is like, you can now talk about your soppy feelings, the duality of these Kwamis. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I do think Tiki and Plague were right for what they did but it still hurts me. And I do think Suhan might not all be that happy when he finally hops back from Tibet and finds out what happens. He might flip a few tables. <laughs> so Adrian and Marinette are sad. So sad. So very, very sad. And then 10 seconds later, they're like, oh, well, that's over now. I'll get on with my life. What? Like, <laughs> it's been nine months with Tiki and Black, not two weeks. Why aren't you sad for longer? Not that I want them to be sad, of course I don't, but like, they just literally forget about it. Like, Shrek 4 came out in 2010 and I'm still not over how bad it was. So Adrian sprints into Marinette's house. She's putting her Adrian picks back up because, you know, priorities. And he walks into the room and look at his little Marion face. He's like, oh yeah. I see what you're doing. And then he goes on to give more reasons why I am single when he does the hand signaling thing with Marinette. I don't really know if that's the correct name for it, but you know what I mean? The hand thing, the hand thing. Like, I am so anxious. I need someone to do this with me for every single decision in my life, including what to eat. I am just full of anxiety and nothing else. And then Marinette almost breaks Adrian's heart by getting her right and left mixed up, which would be funny if I didn't do it too every single day. And Marinette is a child and I am 26. So back to the class who are, once again, five hours behind actual events or plotting to help Adrian and Marinette get together. And you know, their enthusiasm is very sweet. I love that they want their friends this badly to be happy together. It's lovely and sweet and cute, but leave them alone. Oh my God, they'll get together themselves. Just chill out. So just chill out. You know, drink a seven up, eat a moon pie. Quit murdering people. The Kwamis watch them and Tiki is like, I'm gonna go with Alia because obviously I am. And Plague is like, Nino, he did not understand this at all. He eventually picks Zoe because she speaks up. I don't really know his reasoning, but to be fair, Plague doesn't even say hi to Zoe. He just throws a ring at her and then smiles like a maniac. If I had been Zoe in this moment, I would have started running, but let's be real, I have terrible eyesight. So I probably would have got hit with the ring and not even seen Plague and probably just left it where it was. <laughs> <laughs> so Nora's boyfriend or friend, I don't know, gets akumatized. Honestly, I'm not really sure who he, he is, to be honest. But anyway, Alia and Zoe show up to fight him and Zoe doesn't even tell anyone her name. Great job, Zoe. But oh my God, the Adrian at cuddling. So they're watching the news together and Scarabella and Kitty Noir almost get hit and Marinette worried, like kind of scared, cuddles into Adrian and he smiles. I love it, this episode. For me, as chief Adrian at shipper in this fandom, I'm taking that title. Okay, that, that's me. All right, if you want to disagree with me and think it's someone else, you're wrong. It's me. And also, I love Square Stan. This episode was wonderful. So Zoe goes to get so many people to help. Like, if you live in Paris, are you just obligated to help during an Akuma attack? Like, what if you have a dentist appointment? And this definitely would have taken longer than five minutes. Like, the Lucky Charm would have disappeared. <laughs> it would have taken longer than five minutes. And the art shop is, like, right in the battle zone as well. So, um, yeah, there are many things about the Sakuma attack that aren't good. But what is good is the ending. Because, oh my god, besties, the episode finishes with Gaby Baby having big brain time. He's on it this season. Like, in Jubilation, he was great. In Illusion, he was great. But, oh my god, Gabe, 
What is this face? Get it together, please. <laughs> so let's take a look at the fan art this week. So we have three pieces of fan arts all from Nathart's. The first is with Luca using the Peacock Miraculous, and oh my god, my favourite thing is his hair. I mean, to be fair, I think my favourite thing about Luca, aside from the music-themed metaphors that I don't really understand, but I'm like, mm, yeah, I agree, Luca, <laughs> um, is his hair, and I absolutely love the way Nathart has done his hair, yes. And then the second piece is of Alia, using the Turtle Miraculous. And you know what? I do think green could be Alia's colour. I think she looks great in green. I need to see Alia in more green in the show. And the final piece of fan art is an amazing animation of Zoe's transformation sequence into Kitty Noir. I know we didn't get one in the show. And he also fixed her hair, which is great because um, if you watch my Kitty Noir style analysis video, you all know I absolutely hated her <laughs> So anyway, besties, we have a little more fan art to discuss. So if you're on my Discord server, you will know we are hosting a Christmas art contest and a Christmas fit contest. We did one for Halloween. Maybe we'll do one for Valentine's Day. I don't know. And then because my birthday is such an important event to me, also one for my birthday because I'm a narcissist. But anyway, so we had like an art contest. We just had to draw something miraculous Christmas related could be anything you want and then the fic it was a 500 word limit again miraculous related but also Christmas themed you know so we're going to do the art first and before I announce the winner I just want to show like this is an honorable mention this is like the runner up because I just thought it was so adorable I had to show everyone so this piece is from I'm going to butcher your name Dan TGE I'm, I don't know how to say your name I'm so sorry but I didn't want to message you to ask and spoil that I was going to put the art in the video so um I am really sorry. Please message me and tell me how to pronounce it. But it's of Tiki and Plaga giving each other gifts. And I just thought it was so hecking cute. I, it just had to be in the video. I had to show everyone. I had to share this. I couldn't keep this to myself. Absolutely beautiful. However, the winner is Tess with this piece of, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Nino and Max. I don't even ship Nino and Max, but I thought this was absolutely adorable. And there's Markov holding some mistletoe. It just, everything about this piece is absolutely wonderful. And Tess did a great job. Also from my Discord server, you will know that Tess um, has done like all the stickers for the server. So drawings of me, drawings of like all the characters. Like my Discord server is a fun time. It's great. If you want to join, there'll be a link down below. But Tess did an awesome job. So Tess won the art contest. And also Tess has done my channel banner. So, like, talent. Oh my god. But all the entries were amazing, uh, both for the art contest and the fit contest. So besties, if you're in my server already or you're thinking of joining, I would really encourage going to both of those channels. You obviously can't submit anymore, but you can still read both of the channels. I would encourage you just to go and go and look at everyone's entries. I probably spent half an hour last night, as in last night from recording this, uh, just looking over everything. And the whole time I was smiling. It was such a great fun. And I'm so happy I get to be able to do something like this. So the winner is, and I'm just going to have to spell out your name <laughs> because I'm also going to butcher it, is W-R-L-U uh, with their 500 word little fan fiction called Snowy Day. They actually posted it on AO3, so I'll link it down below for you to go and read. You can give kudos to it on there. So um, let me uh, put on my reading voice and we will audio fix style this Christmas fan fiction. Little Kitty on a roof, all alone without his lady. That's how she finds him, sitting on the roof of the building that faces the Eiffel Tower, snowflakes drifting down all around them. Hey, kitty cat! There is no reaction besides the slight swishing of his tail on the thick layer of snow that carpets the roof. Ladybug grows slightly worried for a second, her mind flashing back to Cat Blank. Cat Noir? Cat Noir? Her concerned call is cut off as Cat Noir abruptly turns around, pelting her with a snowball right in her face, as he manically cackles in delight. You jerk! You do look kind of cute lying in the snow like that, my lady. His words are muffled as a couple of snowballs come flying at him. Ladybug has gotten up from the snow and smiles challengingly at Cat Noir. Since he started this, it's so on. They giggle as snowballs fly back and forth between them, turning the roof into a war zone, with dents in the snow everywhere, caused by the impact of the snow meteorites. One hour later, they find themselves covered in snow, and out of breath from all the running around and the excitement. Hey, why don't we go to a cafe and warm up? And calm down a bit, Ladybug suggested while panting slightly. Is this a date, my lady? Cat Noir's eyes widened in naive hope, his cat-like pupils shining with excitement. You wish, Ladybug rolls her eyes. 
Oh, he wished indeed. So badly. And so they are seated across each other, a cup of hot cocoa with fluffy swell foam and little marshmallows on top of it in front of each other, on a cute little tabletop in a peaceful quaint cafe. Water is dripping from their suits as the snow melts, but no one dares criticise Paris' heroes, and instead gives them the best of services. Ladybug looks down at her cup of cocoa, swirling the foam, before taking a sip of it. I never knew you have freckles, my lady. They look really nice on you. She jolts her head up and sees Cat Noir's face right in front of hers. There is so little distance between them that the slightest movement she makes can close the distance between them tragically. Cat Noir. She drags his name out in annoyance as she pushes his face back, but not before a slight flush appears on her face from their proximity. Consent is a thing, you know, she sighs. He pouts, his ears drooping, his tail dropping to the ground, swishing uncomfortably. She has to admit, that's pretty cute. Ladybug softly chuckles as a sheepish blush spreads on Cat Noir's face. He quickly snatches up his cup, using it to cover his face as he drinks in big gulps, attempting to hide from the awkwardness and embarrassment of being called out. She collapses into laughter as he almost immediately puts the cup of cocoa down, choking, having scalded his tongue. So I picked this one just because it was so super cute, but all the rest of the six were amazing. It was really difficult to pick, and someone actually wrote a really good, like, Luca Adrian fic. I don't even really ship them. Uh, a really good look at Adrian Fick that, oh, it was so cute and it made me laugh quite a lot. So I would really encourage you, if you're already in my server, to go and check out everything that everyone else wrote because it was just such a joy to read and a joy to look at all your art. So thank you to all of you for all of your submissions. So there'll be a poll up tomorrow so you can vote for the next screaming session. However, there'll be no screaming session next week because next week we'll be doing the beam review again. I'd love to know what your favourite scenes were from Transmission Besties and I'll see you in the next one.